uh, Champs Media founder and CEO, Mr. Alex Chamwada, uh, Mr. Tyrus Mwithiga, the Group Director, Retail Banking at NCBA, the partners present, I'm excited to see NSSF and KRA are here because those are the people uh, that the diaspora are very interested in. Uh, they were much more interested in them before we came into being. So it's nice to have them here. Wakurugenzi, diaspora returnees, all virtual participants, hello. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. I extend warm greetings on behalf of Madame Rosalind Jogu, the Principal Secretary for the State Department for Diaspora Affairs. As you had already been informed, she would have loved to join us today, but due to pressing duties, she could not be here. I think uh, this is one event that she really, really wanted to attend because this is something that we have dreamt of doing, but we have not been able to do it yet. And therefore, the State Department for Diaspora Affairs appreciates the contributions of Mr. Chamwada, the founder, of the uh, Champs Media. He has played a pivotal role in connecting with the diaspora worldwide and sharing their remarkable journeys and achievements, including some of you who are here. It is a privilege to be part of this forum, which I believe marks the beginning of many more to come. Congratulations, Mr. Chamwada. We eagerly anticipate a fruitful experience that will enhance our policies regarding diaspora returnees. I don't know if I qualify to be a returnee, but I was in South Africa for four and a half years as the deputy head of mission. I don't know if being a civil servant disqualifies us from being returnees, uh, but it was a very uh, interesting experience there. Uh, Mr. Gashora, who is the CEO of NCBA, we were with him in South Africa when we were trying to build the diaspora associations then, and he was playing a very critical role in bringing together the diaspora for us to be able to have some semblance of, uh, of development projects then, even then. But I've also served in UNESCO as ambassador, deputy head of mission. I was the Chargé d'Affaires in France, accredited to Portugal, Serbia, Holy See, and Monaco before I came back last year. It's almost exactly a year since I came back. So I am a returnee of sorts. Having returned, I have not established any business. Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, I feel a little bit uh, when I heard the stories that were being told, it was almost like the, the, those of us who've returned and not made anything out of the experiences that we had out there. It's almost like we wasted that experience, you know? So why did we go if we couldn't bring back anything back home apart from our being civil servants? International migration has played a crucial role in shaping modern civilization. We celebrate your courageous decision to return home and reintegrate into Kenya's systems. Each of you brings unique value gained through experience and enormous uh, achievements which will undoubtedly enrich our nation in many, many ways. Karibuni Nyumbani. The State Department for Diaspora Affairs was established by the current administration in recognition of the immense value of our beloved brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Although we are just 21 months old, we are making strides, we are learning, we are adapting, and definitely committed to our mission. Many have inquired about the specific functions of the State Department. Our role encompasses supporting diaspora engagement, uh, facilitating communication between citizens abroad and their government and promoting initiatives that harness the talents and resources of our diaspora community for national development. So many people ask, what exactly do we do? Because what I have just said, it's a political statement, but what exactly do we do? We have a nine point mandate. The first one is to champion the rights and promotion of the welfare and interests of Kenyans abroad. We heard the complaints by the diaspora that we were only interested in remittances. It is true, we are very interested in remittances. But that is not all that we are interested in because the diaspora is much more than remittances. As what we are learning today, what we are speaking about today, they are much, much more than just the remittances. There is the issue of the welfare. We believe that if we are able to cater for the welfare of the diaspora where they are, 
then they are able to even look at us more favorably as a government and say, Labda, maybe I can do something that will support the community with communities where they come from. And so we've been able to take what we call the mobile consular services to the diaspora. What we, do we do in these services? We carry along the ID people, we carry along immigration people, so we are able to give out uh, IDs, we are able to do birth certificates, we're able to do death certificates. For those who are married abroad we are able to have them get their marriage certificates as well as have them regain their citizenship you will recall that a lot of the diaspora left during some political events and they did not want to be associated with Kenya uh, in any respect whatsoever we have been trying to tell them we are not very bad people. We are, we are trying our level best. And in the efforts of telling them we are not very bad people, we have taken services there, and we have been able to serve over 13,000 in the last one year that we have uh, implemented the mobile consular services. We promote continuous dialogue with the Kenyans abroad. What kind of dialogue? The Kenyans have been able to tell us exactly what they need. And uh, I will let you know that to be able, as a response to some of the proposals that we have, we now have a 24-hour call center. This call center is catering for the diaspora, for them to, to, when they have especially psychosocial needs, we recognize that a lot of the diaspora uh, are not familiar with winter and how brutal it can be. They are not familiar with not having gatheri. You know, they are not familiar with missing Ugali, of all the things, and Skumawiki. So when they go out there, it is dark. There is no get there to comfort yourself. There is nobody speaking Kiswahili. They feel depressed. And we've also noticed that a lot of incidents happen during winters. That's when we have Kenyans, you know, having issues. You know the kind of issues we have. And then uh, we are trying to help them manage the, the, the cold, manage the loneliness by having a call center where they can call and speak to somebody and say, I want to speak to somebody in Kikuyu. Then somebody who speaks Kikuyu is put on the line and they're able to just have that connection with home because that connection we realize is very important. Some of them are in places where they are by themselves. There is nobody else. So when we talk about welfare, it is the holistic welfare of the diaspora. In liaison with um, other stakeholders, we promote the participation of Kenyan diaspora in the democratic processes. This is an ongoing conversation. We had the IEBC conduct elections in some of the areas where you are, where the diaspora are. And the turnout wasn't fantastic, but it was a beginning. So we, want, we are trying to find out why didn't we have the kind of turnout we had anticipated. What can we do better such that then the diaspora feel they want to participate in this democratic process. It's their democratic right to be able to vote. It's their democratic right to be able to choose. One of the issues they told us is that because they're only allowed to choose the president, they want to be able to choose the MP, they want to be able to choose the governors, and so they come back home to be able to do that. So this is an ongoing conversation to see how can we respond to some of the needs that they want. We support Kenyans in the diaspora in harnessing more opportunities for employment and enterprise development. We have been bashed quite a little bit for this one because we are looking for jobs for our youth abroad. We do recognize that we are not growing as fast as we, ca we can to absorb the numbers that are graduating every year. And subsequently, one of our mandates, together with the State Department for Labor, is to look for jobs abroad. So we look for places where the diaspora are. We have had great partnerships with the diaspora where we are able to get jobs and be able to take our Kenyans there. So we know that it, really, ideally, it is not the government's role to look for jobs. It is the government's role to create a conducive environment where jobs are created. But we do have a crisis at hand. So should we just sit back and not address that crisis? Or should we do what we can, the little we can, to make sure that some of our people get the jobs abroad, which are available anyway? So why not take advantage of them? Why not use government to open these uh, pathways for the Kenyans to be able to then find their way there. So I know we get a bit of backlash on that one, but we feel that those who are actually going out 
are very happy with the going out. The people who are complaining, most of them already have jobs. The ones who don't have jobs are quite happy to look for the jobs. Of course, we are not just looking at jobs abroad. We, first and foremost, it's creating jobs in Kenya. Secondly, it's creating online jobs. And third, the third option is to look for jobs abroad. And that is where we actually work with the diaspora, both digital jobs and to get jobs abroad. We develop incentive framework for diaspora remittances. We recognize that the cost of remittances is very, very high. The SDG on the cost of remittances, the universal accepted, is 3%. In some of the East African countries, it's as high as 27% of what it is that you're sending. This discourages diaspora from looking at uh, different ways of investing. Because for you to invest, you need to remit your funds. If 27% of it is going towards the cost of remitting it, then you'd rather hold on to it and look for something else. So we are having a robust conversation uh, not just within the East African community, but also within the African community to see how best we can bring down the cost of remittances such that the diaspora are then able to have the benefits of sending the money. We harness diaspora savings, facilitate foreign di direct investments, and technology transfer. And I am excited, Cancer, Texas, uh, Cancer, the Texas Cancer Center are here. We are happy. I'm not sure if the Pearson View Center is here. We are excited about the professor building that uh, uh, big thing in uh, Naivasha. I think I want to have a conversation about that, because this is something we've really we really wanted to have somebody come and do that. Uh, a lot of people are afraid to start, and we are willing to support as much as we can as a government to be able to make sure that your investments, your, the, the initiatives you have taken are actually succeeding. It is not in our interest for them not to, to succeed. It is our, in our interest to assist and to promote you such that what you're doing succeeds. Another one in liaison with the uh, Ministry of Labor is to implement the global labor strategy, which I've already alluded to, and also to secure the placement of Kenyans abroad. Last but not least is to mainstream the Kenyan diaspora into the national development process. I want to congratulate you because you've taken the initiative all by yourself to have to mainstream the development process and to go out and look at where you can tap in. I'm very interested in listening to all the stories because who would have ever imagined there's somebody who picks your bag from home? Uh, who would have ever imagined you just come out and you leave your tags, your luggage tags? Zitakufuata nyumbani. If you have a meeting, you're not worried because uh, the longer you stay, the queue is growing, growing outside because KRA, uh, they are waiting to see your bags. <laughs> to open your bags and they are threatening to charge you $500 for whatever you bring in, you know? So all those things, they worry people. They do worry people. So look at this initiative of somebody coming up with that. So I'm really interested in hearing what everybody in this room is doing because I think it's fantastic, the kind of thought process that Kenyans have. In the process of doing this, we have our bottom-up house there. Uh, we protect, we believe that at the very base is the protection of the Kenyans. And then we engage the Kenyans and we empower them and they're able to prosper at the apex of the house. So that is our idea of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Okay. Over the past 21 months of our existence, we have made significant strides and achieved numerous milestones, including repatriation of distressed citizens, including uh, unfortunate events where some of our brothers and sisters who have uh, fallen into hard times have passed on and there's been nobody to bring them back home. We have been able to, to convince the parliament to give us funds to be able to repatriate some of our dead brothers and sisters back home. But more importantly, the distressed ones, the ones who are very sick, the ones who need to come back home for one reason or the other, we've been able to bring quite a number of them back home, more than 300, I think. Evacuation of efforts, we've had conflict areas and we've been able to evacuate quite a large number from the conflict areas, including Lebanon, which is ongoing. Mobile consular services, I've alluded to that. So to be able to actualize our, our Kazi Maju program, we have job fairs, which we are doing in the counties. 
and we've had very many young people come and we want you to partner with us such that when we come to your county, you're also able to have a conversation with the young people in terms of uh, what is to be expected when they go out abroad. Sometimes our expectations are much larger than what is the reality. And so voices from those who have lived abroad are very important for us. If you're interested in partnering with us in this respect, please talk to any one of our colleagues. At the end, I'll make them stand up so you know where they are. And then we are able to get your details and we are able to collaborate with you because it is in our interest to collaborate with you. Uh, we've been able to have our Kenya diaspora for policy. This was uh, developed through a very vibrant process. We engaged with the diaspora. I hope some of you were able to engage with the document and gave proposals and we were able to come up with a document. We are waiting for parliament to approve of it before we launch it. On the mental health action plan, I think I've already alluded to some of what we are doing, but we do have a mental health action plan. And to be able to assist some of our colleagues abroad, our Kenyans abroad, we are trying to map out where the councillors are globally. So in the event that you know where some of the councillors are, please assist us because we want to know where they are. Some cases, we are not able, they, they are unable to get funds to go for the help that they need. So we are looking for Kenyans who would be happy to give us pro bono services, such that then the Kenyans who so desperately need these services are able to reach out and they get it from fellow Kenyans. They feel a bit more at home uh, because they are, they are Kenyans who are willing to do it. Some have already started doing it and we'll be happy if to hear from you to help us. Our strategic plan is ready. We're in the process of uh, getting together the launch this Monday, and we warmly welcome you. It will be at the Kenya School of Government, Lower Kabete, at 11 a.m. If you're there at about 10.45, uh, uh, that would be fantastic. Come and hear what it is that we are envisioning for the next four years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, the State Department for Diaspora Affairs is committed to championing your protection and the rights of the diaspora. We also acknowledge the great contribution that the diaspora has made towards the country's social economic development, for instance, on the very famous remittances. It is now the highest forex sana. We do not want to assume that it is uh, going to be like that forever. We want to be able to encourage the Kenyans to be able to to, to remit their funds, and that is why we're even talking about the cost of remittances. Through transfer of knowledge and skills, we call it brain sharing as the State Department for Diaspora Affairs, because when you go out there, you're sharing what you have, and when you come back, you're sharing what you've learned from out there. So it is brain sharing. Uh, the establishment of the Texas Cancer Center, the Pearson View, the factory we are hearing about, and there are so many others. It's, it's giving an advantage to the Kenyans. We also have diaspora who are engaging in philanthropic activities. If you are engaging in philanthropic activities, or you know those who are, we want to partner with them because some of them want to bring medical equipment to Kenya, for example, because they want to do a medical camp. And then they have not spoken with the Ministry of Health, and then they are stuck at the airport because they cannot bring in their goods. So if we know in advance this is what you wish to do through your philanthropic exercise, we can be able to sp help you uh, speak to the relevant offices such that then you have a more seamless experience in the philanthropic exercise. We of course acknowledge that reintegration has many challenges and perhaps as a State Department, we have not yet put in place Mikakatis to ensure every returnee feels welcome and that their contribution is channeled where it is needed the most, the State Department for Diaspora Affairs assures you that any necessary support that would smoothen the process, knocking on every door to ensure you find what you need, including counseling, because we recognize some of our processes, our portals can be very big and you need to be counseled after you've lost your shocks when you've hit those portals. We are alive to the culture shock that sometimes hits us when we come back home, especially after a long time abroad. 
The government is also alive to the challenges faced by the diaspora in porting their social benefits. This is one area that we are engaging aggressively. Some of you have come back. I was having a conversation with someone and I was asking, how did you port your social benefits? Were you able to port your pensions? Uh, where you are, was the country allowing you to have your pension transferred back to Kenya, such that then you're able to draw your pensions. So we are having conversations on how best to help the returnees, including that conversation. We are encouraging the diaspora to secure their retirement plans back home through the Haba Haba. NSSF has come up with a, with a program for the returnees, and we're excited to see that they're here. They will probably explain about the product that they have. We therefore thank you for the investments that you have made so far and urge you to use the networks that you created in your host countries to encourage foreign investors, as this will also help us tackle the unemployment in the country. We also encourage you to use the knowledge that you have from your former host countries to open up trade routes for Kenya goods and services abroad. We welcome you as a strategic partner as we continue to secure placement of Kenyans abroad, which is one of our initiatives under the Global Labor Migration Strategy. We call it the Kazimaju. The State Department for Diaspora Affairs also wel welcomes the stakeholders present here today to partner with us to the advantage of the diaspora and the other returnees or the potential returnees. Together through these initiatives targeted at Kenyan diaspora community, we will not only enhance the well-being but also point them to global opportunities. So we encourage you to follow SDDA's social media handles at diaspora underscore KE. I was looking because we normally have a, a poster which has our handle, but it's very simple. It's at diaspora underscore KE to get notified of our activities and engagements. We wish to interact with you, and because I would wish for you to know who my colleagues here are, kindly stand up colleagues from SDDA. We are scattered in several tables. So please, if you would wish to have a conversation, if you have a question, engage with us such that we are able to respond to the questions that you have. Thank you. Once again, thank you so much, Mr. Chamwada for this forum and the returnees Karibuni home. Thank you very much.